Hey everybody, this is In The Mix with Sister Johnny and it's time for the Holy What? Report. So come on and get ready. You're gonna learn a lot today. Now, some of the information that I'm gonna be sharing, it is information that you may not know about. It may be things you're thinking about and maybe nobody's talking about. We are going to look for ourselves, read, and we're gonna see what's really going on. The reason why I will be bringing this information to you is because I feel like the tribe just don't know. And I want you to know, I want you to be informed. All of these things that I'm mentioning, some of these things are gonna sound foreign to you. It's okay, just go research it. The reason why I want you to read and the reason why I want you to be informed is because if you know what's coming at you and you're prepared, you'll be able to put up a defense. So that's all I'm trying to say is just prepare for the things that are coming so you're not caught off guard. That is the whole purpose of this news piece that I'm going to be doing every single week. Those of you that's been following me, been listening, you know that every now and then I will bust out and do some news and report some information to you that you may not be aware of. I'm just going to continuously do it. I'm just going to do it on Fridays. So when you hear that it's the holy what report, you know what it is already. So the first thing that we're dealing with out here, we already know is the fires. We've been dealing with all these fires. Now, right now, today, we are on alert for possible fires that can occur because it's been really windy. So what PG&E has done is they have turned off the electricity for a lot of people. Not that there's a fire, but because of the wind and the low humidity, they think that perhaps some of their equipment can cause a fire and they don't want that kind of heat. They don't want to take another hit and pay, which I understand. I understand. And we also want to be safe, right? Everything that I'm reading, you can find in the description box on my YouTube channel. So go to my YouTube channel, click in the little description box and all the articles that I'm reading, you can just click on them and you can go read for yourself. I really encourage you to read and do your own research. I wanna to talk to you about what's going on in Asia. The BBC is reporting on October 21st, the following, that Asia is suffering the worst recession in living memory. I thought that was interesting. Living memory? Asia Pacific is set to recover from its worst recession in living memory. The International Monetary Fund, IMF says growth forecasts for the region have been downgraded again, this time from negative 1.6% to negative 2.2% for this year. Those of you that's been listening to me, you know, I've been talking about the International Monetary Fund. I have a show, you can go back and check it out. It's called The Coming Economic Collapse for 2020, 2021 and how to prepare for it, right? And it's not gloom and doom. It's just a show that I did to help people prepare for the things that are coming. They're forecasting that Asia already is having a really hard time. They're already in a recession. It's the worst one ever. But you're going to read all kinds of different articles about the positive things that's going on with Asia or even China. Let me just say China. But I want you to be wise and just, you know, do your own research. Make sure you do your own seeking of the Lord to make sure whatever it is that you need to do for your family, that that's what you need to do for your family. I'm not here to advise anybody on what to do. I'm just bringing information to you. So you can become aware of what's really going on. Here's another article, CNN. They actually put out an article on October 14, 2020. It reads, Chinese president tells troops to focus on preparing for war. Now, I'm not gonna say all these names because I don't want to mispronounce them. So I'm purposely not saying the names. So, but the article again will be in my YouTube channel in the description box. You can click on it and you can read it yourself. So again, CNN is reporting as of October 14th that the Chinese president tells troops to focus on preparing for war. And this is what it reads. The Chinese president has called on troops to put all their minds and energy on preparing for war and a visit to a military base in a southern province in China. During an inspection of the People's Liberation Army Marine Corps in this particular province, the president told the soldiers to maintain a state of high alert and called on them to be absolutely loyal, absolutely pure, and absolutely liable. Again, 
This is being reported by CNN as of October 14th. Here's another article. This is USNI News. This is being reported October 20th, and it says that Australia to join US, India, Japan for Malabar 2020 in high-end naval exercise of the Quad. Let me read this. Australia will join the India-led Malabar 2020 naval exercise next month, operating along with the U.S. and Japan in an exercise meant to send a message to China. The exercise will be a first for the so-called Quad, the Pacific cooperation between Japan, India, Australia, and the U.S. I'm just reading y'all. This article will be in the description box. You can go ahead and read further. Now, I'm not reading all of the articles for the interest of time, but please, I really encourage you to do your own research. NBC, they are reporting as of October 20th, the following. Top officials and business leaders discuss a possible reset for the global economy. Now, everybody know I've been talking about how we need to prepare for this economic collapse that's coming. They're not hiding it, people. It's, the information is out here. There's videos they have out on the Great Reset that's coming. I need people to understand there is a shift that's getting ready to happen, and we should be in a position to prepare ourselves for the shift. CNBC is actually reporting this particular article as of October 20th. Top officials and business leaders discuss a possible reset for the global economy. The coronavirus pandemic has disrupted the global economy and put millions of jobs on the line in the process. With that in mind, some of the world's top economic officials and business leaders are debating how to recover from the crisis in a way that looks beyond mainstream financial matrix like GDP. Now remember, those that's been listening to me, you know I've been talking to you about GDP, gross domestic product. That's important. They're talking about it too. You can go back to my old economic video preparedness video and you can understand what these terms are and I believe I also put these terms in the description box so you can look in the description box for these terms so you can understand what they mean they're telling you that they're getting ready to do a reset and everybody just oh it's a reset oh okay we know what happened when it's a reset when you click any kind of reset button what happens everything shuts down and then we got to wait a little while until everything reboots back up and comes back online so if you think about it in those terms that's exactly what's getting ready to happen. Most of the time when you hit the reset button, we hit the reset button because something happened. There's a freeze, the screen ain't looking right if it's on the computer or whatever the case may be, right? Here's the thing. This time, this is a financial reset. When they hit this reset button and everything comes back online, it will look different. And how we're gonna be able to navigate this new different system is gonna be on, based on how prepared you are for the new system that's going to be coming back online and that is why i am reading these articles i'm hoping that you will prepare yourself and not wait to the last minute okay here's another article san francisco chronicle this actually was put out october 9th and it reads yes people are leaving san francisco after decades of growth it is a city on the decline plunging bart and muni ridership the weakest online sales tax collections in the state a 20 percent drop in apartment rent biking office vacancies san francisco's bleak economic vital signs over the past six months strongly suggest residents are leaving Leaving amid record job losses, the entrenchment of remote work, and a coronavirus pandemic that shows no signs of ending. I'm just going to stop right there and then you can go ahead and read this article in its entirety. There are several articles here. The Wall Street Journal, they said they put out an article and they, it reads, here's what leaving Silicon Valley could mean for some tech workers pay. So it talks about the pay and the reduction in pay when the tech companies leave because it's very expensive to do business here. It's very expensive to live here. So you have higher wages. But if the tech companies leave and they go to an area where the wages aren't as high, the cost of living is not as high, then how would that affect the current employees that work there? So they have all these articles about how the tech industry is being affected right now by all of this. In fact, they have something called the tech bubble that you might want to research. I, I'm not going to read that article. I don't even have it. You just go ahead and type in tech bubble and see what comes up because some people may not be aware of it. Now, what does all this mean? I have one, two, I have 
three, well, two good articles at the end. That's interesting. I say good. Shout out to uh, Brother G. He sent me some information and I'm going to read a, read a little bit about. And I want you guys to really research it as well. But what does all this mean? The reason why I wanted you to know what was going on is because if the money system is going to change, then you have to know the game. You got to understand this new system that's coming online. Don't wait until it happens to try to figure out how to navigate through it, especially if you're a business owner. If you're a business owner or you're still within working age and you're able to work, then this is the time to switch your game up. And what I mean by that is if you're a business owner, for example, if you're a small business owner or even if you're a mid-sized company, you don't want to continue to do the things you're doing that you did pre-coronavirus. Now, we, you have to understand this new financial system. You get with other people, do research, get with your financial advisor, get as much information as you can about this new system that's coming online or at least get educated so you can have other safeguards in place so that you can say, okay, I can make a smooth transition, begin to structure your business in a way that you're beginning to switch from how you used to do business to a newer way. And it could be little by little so that when the switch happens, you won't be completely caught off guard and you'll still be able to function as a business and bring in revenue. But if you wait until that moment comes, it can actually stop you from doing any kind of business. And that is why you want to get educated now so that when this change comes, it happens in the next six months or so, educate yourself now and begin to make these small changes. Then what will happen is when it comes, it will shock you but it won't stop you do you know what I mean you'll still be able to keep your business afloat because you've already made the necessary changes to still keep your business moving even if the financial system changes to do those things you've already done certain things to keep your business flowing even if it does change so that's why I'm saying educate yourself what is blockchain what is this digital currency what is the IMF talking about how is this going to affect me as a business owner how do I get involved how do I begin to shift and make these changes these are the questions you have to ask yourself so that you can be put into a position where you won't be left behind. Now, I mean, let me tell you something. You might say, well, Sister Johnny, I don't have a business. I'm just, I'm working my nine to five and I'm good. Let me tell you something. You have to begin to retrain yourself. Go on YouTube, learn all you can about blockchain. If you work in a financial industry, you definitely need to switch the game up because you want to put yourself in a marketable position. If you're a teller, if you're somebody that sits at a computer, computer all day and you work from a computer this affects you if you're a person that's been affected by this coronavirus and your company said hey you go work from home don't be one of them people because I had somebody reach out to me and was like oh I'm at home chilling I only did like 30 minutes of work in like eight hours that's nothing to brag about because let me tell you what these companies are doing they are restructuring they are restructuring and what that means you may you may have heard it you may be listening and saying oh I've heard about restructuring those of you that haven't restructuring is when a company makes significant changes to its financial or operational structure these companies may also restructure when preparing for a sale or buyout a merger they are trying to save their company so when you hear restructuring that is no reason for you to sit down and be chilling that is a reason for you to begin to educate yourself we are getting ready to switch the monetary system is going to change how we interface with one another is going to change how we do business with one another is going to change how we communicate with one another is going to change it's already changing don't wait until the change comes. Use this time to be a forward thinking person. Get ahead of the game. Go on YouTube. Take some classes. I am an advocate for taking a class. If you don't know something, take a class so you can know it. Go online read 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 so you can be educated when you go into an interview for a job and it's a financial company or if it's an executive position or if it's a position working in corporate you want to go in there and speak the language if they ask you do you know anything about blockchain and you know anything about this particular industry do you know about this new technology ai i wanted to talk about that if you're going into biotech begin to understand your industry and speak the language because if the more you know and the more you understand even if you're not that savvy if you at least know the language 
we used to say, if you know working knowledge, you know, if you know the language, if you kind of know how to maneuver a little bit, that's better than nothing at all. I'm telling you, read, read, read. Rather you like it, technology is here and it's not going anywhere. And if you want to work and make money, this is a time to take a class. This is a time to get certified, get some certification around this stuff so that when the shift happens, you are already ready. You ready. They, they want to grab you up. You are calling asset and not a liability. If you have a job and you're working from home and you only working about one hour's worth of work out of eight hours, please do not think for a second that your employer is not tracking how much work work you're doing they know if your work volume has decreased and you're working from home they're looking at all of that they're looking at spreadsheets they're looking at line items they're looking at everything FTEs they're looking to see how many employees do we really need to do this job if you have a department of 100 people and of those 100 people everybody's doing an hour's worth of work every single day let me tell you that's going to be cut down to 50 people trust me companies are in survival mode and they are restructuring they're trying to see what works what doesn't work and you are the test done and that's the only way to know what works. You got people working from home. Am I still able to make money? Is my company still able to stay afloat? How well is this working? Should we have all these people working? Maybe this doesn't make sense. Maybe it doesn't make sense to even have this whole department. This is part of the restructuring. They're trying to survive. If you have a job like that and you see your workload has diminished, or you one of those people that need to be ahead of the game. Start looking for another job. Start trying to figure out if you want your job try to figure out what else you can do to pick up more work let your boss know hey I was wondering you needed help with this I noticed that this wasn't getting done maybe I can take this on and help you out be seen as an asset show them your value this is the time if you want to keep your job because I'm telling you don't think that you just because you don't have a whole lot of work that you just chilling I know too many people that work at home right now so many people I know and some of them are really they have really crucial jobs but there's some you you kicking and laughing I'm telling you what they doing they are restructuring all major companies are doing it it doesn't matter what industry you're in everybody's doing it so put yourself in a position to be an asset not a liability because if you are we already know what happened in December December is when everybody get cut if we have one more thing happen I'm telling you so save, prepare, don't think because you you may be a public, you working in a public sector, you might feel like, oh, I'm good. I'm a government employee. I got this. Uh-uh. You need to prepare. Cities go bankrupt all the time. I'm telling you, prepare, just prepare. You put yourself in a position to prepare no matter what. I don't care what they're saying in the news. Just make sure you are prepared and your household has everything that they need. CBS News actually reported on July 8th, 2020. Shout out to G. He actually sent this to me. I didn't know about that. Well, I heard about it, but I didn't really know, know about it. And so he sent this information to me. So I want to give him a shout out. It says Karen Act introduced in San Francisco to outlaw racially motivated 911 calls. A San Francisco lawmaker on Tuesday introduced an ordinance to outlaw racially motivated 911 calls. Under the Karen Act, people who called law enforcement based on racial bias could face criminal charges. CBS San Francisco reported. This article is a wonderful article because people that will call the police on people that are walking in their communities, neighborhoods, while they're black, will tend to call the police and over-exaggerate the situation. A case in point, in the article, it makes reference to a white woman named Amy Hooper who called police on a black man in New York Central Park after he asked her to leash her dog. And all that was called on camera if you missed it just google it hopefully people will stop doing that so on that note i'm gonna stop those of you that have comments please go ahead and comment like share tell people to prepare if you see people just chilling kicking it you know spending money doing whatever share with them hey let me tell you something i just read or something i just learned i read it myself this is really happening look into it thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to go to my youtube channel and subscribe like and share don't forget to click that notification bell and thank you so much for tuning in remember god loves you and he just wants to use you this is in the mix.